What's up everybody, welcome back. I'm Abe and this is Stellaris, or at very least the Stellaris forums. I was reading a, uh, an announcement about the upcoming patch which is coming out on 5.12 to celebrate their fourth anniversary, although the fourth anniversary was uh, on the 9th. But either way, the 12th is, I believe, Tuesday and that's the day that, these, that this video will go live. So hopefully you finished all the games that you've been playing currently because they will all be outdated and unable to be accessed unless you roll your game back to an earlier version. Um, so, so this is for 2.7 wells and I'm not going to go through the entirety of the patch notes but I'm going to hit most of the free features. There is quite a bit to digest here and then there's stuff for balance. I'll probably talk through that go through stability and performance. Like I'm not going to go through stability and performance I don't think. UI AI, modding, or bug fixes. There's just there's too much content here, and uh, yeah, if you're interested, I'll post a, a link to the this forum thread in the uh, in the video description below, so you can go over and spend some time really digging into it. And on second thought, maybe I will get into balance, um, and maybe AI, just because I think that might be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it. From the top. Uh, let's see. Wells 2.7.1. The Federation votes show the f voting method in the voting pop up. Law votes also show the current law of that category. The galactic community will occasionally str send strongly worded letters to empires that are in breach of galactic law, giving them an opportunity to make all adjustments necessary with a single bureaucratic stroke. That's good. 70 plus original audio assets remastered, new ship designer sounds with more variations, loads of new ambient planet reveals, mono to stereo upgrade of legacy sounds, technical fixes on several sound effects. Uh, let's see, added extended shifts, edicts, which increases worker and slave output at the cost of happiness. I mean, they're slaves, so they're not gonna be terribly happy anyway. I guess that's probably a boon for folks who use slaves. Added industrial subsidies edict, which increases consumer goods output of artisan jobs at the cost of energy upkeep. It is unlocked by global production strategy tech. Okay, that's good to know. Whoever that gentleman is, or gentlewoman, who made that massive image that shows the entirety of the research tree may need to uh, update their image. Let's see, added industrial subsidies, which increases consumer, we saw that. Added forge subsidies edict, which increases alloy output of metallurgist jobs at the cost of energy upkeep. It is unlocked by global production strategy tech. Uh, it sounds like that tech is what's gonna be needed for most of these edicts. Uh, added extended shifts edict, which increases worker output at the cost of worker happiness. It is unlocked by workplace motivators, domination tra uh, tradition. Added drone overdrive edict for gestalt or no, I think it's Gestalt. Gestalt? Gestalt. No, it's Gestalt. Gestalt empires that is unlocked by the drone network's domination tradition. Added evacuation protocols edict, which is available to doomsday origin empires. Implemented slave trade resolutions. Which peace offer is possible must now be scripted per war goal type. Added accessibility settings for multiplayer chat. Added new visual effects and sound effects or special effects. Visual effects and special effects for space storms which can appear randomly from the mid-game onwards. That's cool. Uh, added new visual effects and special effects for nebulas, crisis systems, consecrated planets. Added a new ga or added a galaxy generation option to completely disable Xeno compatibility. Added some Envoy related events. Added new hive mind name list. Added a joint operation event chain for galactic unions and research cooperatives. Research cooperatives, hegemony federations for trade leagues. All of those things have new joint operation event chains. Added an event chain for joint military exercises for a militarist federation. Habitats no longer require moving, removing mining or research stations and can be built directly on top of them. That's fantastic. I'm tired of having to pull stuff out just to figure out whether I can put a habitat there or not. Habitats built above nanite deposits now retain the nanite production. Habitats built, looks like my son is waking up, so I'm going to have to make this quick. Um, habitats built above Zro, dark matter, living metal, or nanite deposits are now treated as research habitats. Added a home system each for Tianki and space amoebas. Added several events to spawn amoebas and, uh, I think, space whales during the, let's see, 
Tianki and Space Amoebas. I would guess they added several events to spawn Amoebas, probably and Tianki during the game. Added the Tianki Conservation Act resolution to the Galactic Community. Added the Tianki Pest Control resolution to the Galactic Community. Added a Space Amoeba Protection Act Galactic resolution, letting all countries peacefully coexist with Space Amoebas or face the consequences. Added a new Tianki hatchling type and randomized Tianki fleet compositions. I apologize for my pronunciation if it's terrible. New Tianki fleets can now spawn from their home system. Added a new roaming space cloud. And the comment of their home system, one of the highlights of this is that uh, a lot of these, the space whales and all of these other sort of creatures that you would come across will now have home systems that continually spawn uh, these creatures. So any of the research you get from them or that you've been working with for them, you'll uh, actually be able to benefit more from. Uh, added a pirate fleet, which may also spawn in the late game, raiding basics for basic resources, raiding systems for basic resources. Added turbulent nebula systems where ship systems are impaired. Remnants origin is now unlocked by owning either ancient relics or federations, does not require both. Orbital habitats now have reduced tech and construction requirements and start with four districts. Two additional tiers of habitat technology have been added which unlock planetary decisions to expand the size of your habitats. Advanced habitats can also support basic housing buildings. The Voidborn Ascension perk has been changed to give each of your advanced habitats two additional building slots and the new habitat technologies as research options. And permit the construction of advanced housing buildings on advanced habitats. Void dwellers now begin with their capital habitat upgraded to be an advanced habitat and have habitat expansion available as an engineering research option. Mining drones can now occasionally expand to nearby unclaimed systems. Oof. Crystals can now occasionally spawn a single ship that seeks out faraway asteroids to crash into and spawn new crystals. Well, that's cool. Um, made it possible for edicts to be running perpetually until turned off. That's also nice. There is now an edict capacity and going over it means a hit on Empire Sprawl. That is not as nice. Do not like. Praise be, a new set of resolutions have been added to the galactic community that uphold the divinity of life. We expect the righteous empires of the community to support this cause. Favors can now be used to convince your Federation allies to accept your law proposal. Added expanded breeding program edict that is unlocked by the gene crops tech. Let's see balance. Encourage planetary growth decision has been removed from the game. Food policies removed from game and nutritional plenitude has been changed into an edict now unlocked by the gene crops tech. Healthcare campaign, drone campaign or hive and drone campaign machine have been removed from the game. Interesting. Inward Perfection Civic Effect on Growth Speed reduces from 20% to 10%. Inward Perfection Civic now also increases Edict Cap by plus one. AI Empires are more willing to conform to galactic law. Greater Than Ourselves now moves Pops more regularly and more often. Adopting Diplomacy Traditions no longer increases Pop Growth from Immigration, but unlocks the Di Diplomatic Grants Edict instead. Farming Subsidies Edict is now unlocked by Food Processing Tech instead of Eco Simulation. Databank Uplinks Discovery Tradition now also unlocks Research Subsidies Edict. Adopting Discovery Traditions now also unlocks Map the Stars Edict. Gestalt Crystal Mining, Gas Extracting, and Moat Harvesting drones are now classified as miners, like their non-Gestalt counterparts. This does not alter drones working in synthetic special resource production jobs. Increased the duration and research boost for rewards from Joint Operation, Dismembered Cloud, Galactic Union, and Research Cooperative. Uh, cut the size of rebel, ar rebel armies spawned when revolts take place by a third. Nerfed the randiness induced by event spawned mushroom spores so that the planet no longer turns into a pop factory. Uh, added some help for the AI to not die as badly when doomsday happens. Galactic Community Senate debate has been reduced to four years. The cooldown on declaring a resolution an emergency measure has been increased to 20 years. Increased the chance of getting the Lesser Messenger Arc site. You no longer need to demolish mining or research stations to build Dyson Spheres or Matter Decompressors. They will automatically remove those upon completion. That, too, is great. I was... It was a pain in the ass. Wankwart Artem is no longer a viable candidate for the Ecumenopolis project if you accept custodianship of its unpaved paradise. Hive Minds will now treat hive-minded pops that aren't of their species as full members of the hive, meaning that they must be given full citizenship and can no longer be enslaved or purged. Hive-minded pops that aren't of their species. 
Hmm. I'll have to look into that one. Weak pops are now more likely to embrace pacifist ethics. Makes sense. Marauder successor state civics now have an effect plus 15% naval cap and plus 10% ship fire rate, respectively. Space clouds are now individually far more powerful, but no longer spawn in fleets. Added empire modifier effects for empires that propose resolutions, depending on whether the resolution passes or follows or fails. And killing Chianki now yields energy and exotic gases, but upsets xenophile empires. All right, so let's go on down to the AI. I don't think it's too long. All right. AI will always use the best available template when modifying a species to avoid creating hundreds of species with just a few pops each. AI takes edict cap into consideration. The AI now takes the it takes that into consideration when deciding which edicts to enact. The AI will always try to be at the edict cap, prioritizing removing exceeding edicts over adding new ones. Updated AI economic plans to support subplans also made it so that if the AI finishes a plan early, it can take a plan ahead of time. Ensure military AI doesn't try to merge Federation fleets with regular ones. Improved AI weightings for various Gestalt resource producing jobs to factor species traits into the weightings. That's nice. AI has more granularity while considering Federation laws. Align AI evaluation code between ask to join and invite to Federation, hopefully fixing the issue where AI nation continuously asks to join a Federation. Fixed economic AI computation of admin cap and subplans in general. Improve AI economic plan logging and military AI should issue orders to orbit in the current system when waiting for others to regroup. Now, my question, and I think most of this uh, applies to NPCs or your, your enemy factions that you're going up against, but I hope that a lot of this will also impact if you automate the planning and production of your planets. Because when you have like 20 plus planets, it is the entire game just building stuff and managing all of those planets. And hopefully the AI will get good enough that you feel, or that at least I feel confident leaving it to them to manage my planets and not find myself in a massive hole for my economy. So anyway, so that's it. Uh, look, for more pair, uh, look for more Stellaris videos in the coming weeks now that this patch is out. I'll probably be doing a, another little recap of where we are now, what, what's available in the starting factions and everything and doing some gameplay. So thanks for being here. Thank you for watching. Hit me up in the comments with uh, some of your favorite stories from Stellaris, and we'll jump into it on Thursday. Thanks a lot.